So yesterday I did a Google level one slide presentation and Christy has done this presentation before for us when we first went virtual. So I literally have copied Christy's presentation and I am going to try to share my screen with you so you can see it. I will say once I start sharing my screen, I can't figure out how to see the chat at the same time. So if you have a question, please feel free to unmute your microphone and ask it while I'm talking because I won't necessarily see it in the chat. Okay, so it's thinking about it, but it should show you my screen pretty quickly. So Christy did this presentation and Cassie, Michelle Molina, Catherine Bueno and I totally ripped it off with permission and just sort of added a little bit to it. For my people who were in level one yesterday, I showed you how to change your background to a color. We did this. If I wanted it orange, there it's orange. But I didn't show you that what you can also do is choose an image and do a search. So if I search for the beach, I got one. And now my background's the beach. I put my Bitmoji in about Friday before I put the beach, so it doesn't quite match, but there you go. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome. <laughs> now poor Grace shares a room oh. with me, so she's heard me talking about slides for two days now. Um, okay, so back to Christy's presentation. I'm not going to go whole screen so that I can show you what this does in slides. So there are some add-ons that Christy has already added to Chrome for everyone. So they are in, if you were building a slide, they're right next to the tools button. Tools, add-ons. If you click add-ons, all of these different things come up. There's an equation editor that you math people might find useful. Not a math person, so I haven't even pressed it to see. But there is. Icons by noun is neat. I tried using it last night. It lets you search for just about anything quickly and see how it comes up right here. It makes you sign up for it, though. So I didn't sign up for it. It lets you choose an image, and then it asks you to sign up. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I did a cat. You get all these cute little icons of cats. But when you go to try to pull it over, it makes you unlock it. And what that means is they want you to sign up. You have to give your email and all that sort of thing. There's a like $40 a year version, but there's a free version too. I didn't even sign in, but I thought you might like to know about that. Christy used it to make a happy, sad face thing. So if you clicked happy, it would bring you to one slide. And if you click sad, it would bring you to a different one. There's also an explore button. I learned this last night too. If you click explore in tools, you can search right here. So if you were building a slide that you wanted to insert a link to, and this little elephant picture right here, yesterday we talked about adding National Geographic links in. So I'm going to use that as an example. So I'm going to search for National Geographic. I should stop choosing these long words to type. But say I want to link that. I can copy and paste that link wherever I want it to be. And I don't have to open a new tab to search for it. It'll search right here for it. So that's kind of a shortcut. But I will say, um, I don't find you get the same search as if you open a tab. So if you're looking for something that you know you're going to have to dig a little further for, you might be better off just opening a whole new tab. But if you want to do a shortcut, there is an add-on right there that lets you explore. Um, and they'll let you copy and drag it over. Just click it and drag it over. 
Then Christy has this awesome link right here that says 30 interactive Google slide activities. And when you click it, it brings you to a website called ditchthattextbook.com. And I don't know if you can see, but my little URL up here says ditchthattextbook.com backslash eight interactive Google slide activities for classroom enrichment. It's not eight, it's 30. And I'm not going to show you everyone, but I'm going to let you know that they're out there. So there are 30 different templates here already built for you. So if you want to make a Jeopardy game, you don't have to start from scratch. So it's pretty neat. It's got um, create a PDF ebook, uh, choose your own adventure. Those are pretty neat. I just started digging into that the other day. There's a board game, like a basic board game that you build your game around. So you're not, it just gives you where to start. So you don't have to start from scratch. There's a magnetic poetry one. Create an app. I didn't click it. I have no idea how to create an app, but maybe that would be helpful. Um, thin slides is one of those things that makes a master slide and then lets you push one out to all of your students where they're not clicking on the same one. It's not the only way to do that, but I think that's the idea of that. Slides for interactive notebooks. So there are lots of different fun things on here that are shortcuts that you don't have to start off from the beginning. So I thought that was important for you to know that it's out there. Again, that's ditchthattextbook.com. There's a jigsaw in there and their game board things looked to be pretty cool. And then there's something called Unsplash. And yesterday, I'm gonna take this little guy off cause I'm gonna use him again to show you. Yesterday, I showed you how to add a photo to your slide, but Christy has already added this Unsplash add-on right here under add-ons. So I'm clicking on add-ons. I go to Unsplash, and if I click Add an Unsplash Photo, photog Mr. Alberto, please come to the office. Photographers have added and given permission to use their high quality photos. So if I'm looking for a picture of an elephant like I was yesterday, but for some reason I need a high photo high um, quality image. I can't, it won't let me, I'm sorry, it won't let me click and dad, drag. I have to copy it. Oh, I know why, because I probably didn't hit insert. No, I don't need to hit insert. Sorry, y'all. You can see that I haven't done this much. Copy. Paste. And that photo is a much higher quality than what you usually find in a Google search. So if for some reason you needed a high quality photo, that's a place that you can find them quickly and easily. So I thought that was neat too. So this slide has a few different things that we have used. Um, you can push a slide to student slides a couple of different ways in Google Classroom. Not really sure how to do an own course classroom yet. I know you can. I sent Evelyn Huddleston a text the other day asking if I could show this to you guys because I happened to have to see this because of a 504 kid last year, so I knew it was there. And she was like, well, that's not the best work that I've done. And I was like, ah, I just need to show them that it, it works. So this slideshow for Evelyn and Kelia, I don't even remember what they were reading, but their kids could, so when you save this as a PDF, it lets um, some things stay static and some things not. So their kids would just hover over this and move it to where it needed to be. So they didn't have to type out a definition, they just moved it around. Uh, I think Nearpod lets you build that in Nearpod now. So that'll be neat. But I just thought you should know that that was an option. And Evelyn has things built in like watch the video, mark the box with an X to say that you've watched it all. Hopefully they actually do that because we all know they don't always press that turn it in button on Google Classroom. 
Um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about that. So when I sh asked Evelyn, she said, well, let me show you my interactive notebook. So this is pretty neat. I did watch a video or two or three last night about how to build an interactive notebook. I'm not really going to show you how tonight. Uh, today, uh, we don't have enough time. I think most people would rather hear about Bitmoji classrooms. But if you're going to build an interactive notebook, it's sort of the same basis as a Bitmoji classroom. So you'll get some tips just from the Bitmoji one. But just so you can see, Evelyn has all of these things built in already. And like you could press that and it would lead you to Flocabulary. She has all of this already set up for them. So I was all impressed just about her um, click and drag things, but all of this is already done for them. Same kind of thing here. They drag what needs to be. So just so you can see what that looks like. It's complicated for our little kiddos, but I thought you should know that that's out there in case you were unaware. So let me show you this real quick because once we start talking about Bitmoji classrooms, we're probably not going to talk about anything else. So if you have not heard about this lady, Alice Keeler, you want to see her. You want to, you want to Google her because she's like a tech guru in my eyes. So she has all of these different things up about how to do things, how to give feedback, how to make all these templates and use them. So if you are looking for something, she is a good um, place to go to find your answer. So if you click on here, she's got all these add-ons. And these things make you not start from scratch. Roster tabs, rubrics, um, turn-ins, newsletters, uh, scrambling a list, agendas, all sorts of things. Okay, I have to tell you that it's funny. I can hear my voice on Al on. Grace's computer over there, and it's kind of funny. So, um, there's also a video that Alice Keeler has up that shows you how to add video feedback to student work. You use Screencastify. It's not very complicated, but I knew everybody wouldn't want to know about that. So, I just want to let you know that that's out there if you want to look that up. It's pretty neat. If you're using Screencastify, when you save it, you need to remember to change the sharing settings on it to that anyone with the link can view it. If you don't, then your kids will email you and say, I, can't, I pressed the link and I can't see it. And I promise you it will happen because that happened to me last year. Um, That's Bender. Hang on, guys. Yes? I'm sorry, you're in a meeting? <laughs> um, and a Google present in a... It's fine. I'll call back later. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Sorry, y'all. I was trying to turn my microphone off and I couldn't even find it. Um, so now I'm going to talk about Bitmoji classrooms. So I'm going to show you the one that I made. That's not the one that I made last year. Where did it go? Oh, no, never mind. I know where it is. It's right here. Any questions before I start? Okay. I'm going to keep going then. So this is the Bitmoji classroom that I made last year in May toward the end of school for my reading intervention kids. Now, the important thing for you to know right now is if you want to build one of these things, the place that you want to start is one of these Facebook groups. So the Facebook group that I joined is called Bitmoji Craze for Educators, Craze, C-R-A-Z-E. 
there are a lot of different groups out there and I think they all sort of do the same thing. I can't join more than one. One is already clogs up my Facebook feed, which is awesome. But yet if I would join three of them, I would never see anything else, I think. So pick and choose the way you want. But I'm going to show you what people put up in them and you'll be like, oh, I'm joining one today. So someone in that group posted this Starbucks background with their Bitmoji and their links to different books. So all that I had to do was make a copy of it and change what I wanted to change. So I added my Bitmoji to it and the books that I wanted my kids to read. The worst part of it is deciding what you want to put in it. So my kids were, re we were reading about Egypt right before we took a break. So this links them to Epic, which they would have all been logged in on on their computer. So it would take them straight to this book brings you right to where, right where you left off. I showed it to the last group, so I'm on the back page. So if you don't know about Epic, Epic is pretty awesome. It has, um, it's free to teachers from some crazy school day hours, like eight to three or something like that. And then they extended um, access till like the end of June or something like that for kids for 24 hours a day. So my kids could click at any time of the day and they would have been able to read anything. And there are all different sorts of books and videos. Um, so I'm just kind of scrolling so you can kind of see what Epic looks like if you haven't used Epic. It's free during the school day. So they could click the mummy's curse and it would bring them straight to that. If they click enemy pie, it brings them the storyline online online because that's the video that I chose to link to them. My name is Cameron Mannheim. You may know me from the practice, but I hope not because it was on way past your bedtime. Today I'm going to read Enemy Pie, written by Derek Munson and illustrated by Tara Callahan King. It should have been a perfect summer. My dad so you get the idea there. You could also you do a screencastify of you reading the book and your kids definitely want to hear you reading a book. So you can do that. This one down here goes to YouTube. We had a little discussion yesterday about things that are authorized and not authorized. I have no doubt that this guy Kirk Lewis or Lewis Kirk, I don't know who he is, reading these books is, I'm sure he's Lewis Kirk because I think that's his picture right down there. He doesn't have permission to read these. So be a good boy and don't get into mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder. But you get the point. I am not worried about somebody coming to sue me about posting a video that somebody was reading a book online. If you're worried about that, I totally understand and I would stick to things like Epic and um, reading A to Z and things like that that we have authorization for. I don't know that anybody's going to be chasing me down because I put a link to some guy reading a book. But that gives you an idea of what you can post. This is back in Epic. This is just the audiobook of the Boxcar Children. It doesn't have the words up there. It just reads it. King Snow Angel and Violet started rolling springs. It brings you right to where you left off. Um, I think this one's a storyline online. So the worst part of this was really deciding what I wanted to to post in it because it was sort of a free for all. I know if I put up too many books, my kids wouldn't read any of them. Um, some of them had already started reading the boxcar children. So that was a good one to put in. And Epic has a bunch of different boxcar children books. So it sort of gives them a link to once they finish one, another one pops up, they might keep reading. I'm going to show you how to start a Bitmoji classroom and how to post links and photos and all that sort of thing. I'm going to go back to the meet for a second to see if anybody has any questions.
Alice Keeler's pretty awesome. I just learned about her like last week when I started planning for this. Yeah, Hannah, it's pretty neat. I will warn you guys, if you join that fa one of those Facebook groups, you can spend hours and hours and hours digging into what people have posted. It's pretty awesome. It kind of shows you um, when you need to remember the good in people, people share so many things. I'm about to show you some examples. The other day I was like, I have to start saving these classrooms so that I can show you what people have shared because it's pretty exciting. So if there are no questions, I'm going to go on. If you have any questions, just unmute yourself and I'm going to keep going. Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple of different examples before we start building one. If my computer decides to work. We're not. So I have all of these different copies of people's classrooms that I've saved. I want to show y'all a good one first. So this girl was nice enough to post a Harry Potter classroom. Any math people out there, I promise I have one of that too, but that's just not quite as exciting as Harry Potter. So she has all these backgrounds for you already made. So you don't have to start from scratch is the, see, I'm going to show a math one to make you people happy for a moment. And there are just as many math ones out there as there are ELA ones. But so people will post this already. And all you have to do is change what you want on it. So like I could change this to my Bitmoji and change or edit anything that I want on here. Maybe I don't want even an odd. Maybe I want something different. But it gives you a basis already started. So you don't have to spend hours or even minutes building one. This one is neat because people have started sharing. They'll build a classroom for the whole team. So I know first grade is probably all sitting in one classroom right now. You could put a teacher in front of each door. And when you click on it, lead it to the slide that tells everybody about you kind of thing, like introduce your team. Uh, there are a bunch of examples like that up on that uh, the Facebook group. This one's pretty crowded here. I really hadn't clicked that before, I promise. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't really go through that one. Um, there's some science ones. And you can even link like your, if you click, I don't know if this one, if I click, the, this is a like, can you find the fire blanket? But some slides, if you click something, it leads you to another slide. So like if I had a video I wanted them to, to watch about a fire blanket, I could add it in there. Or if I had another slide about fire rules, I could add my slide link to that. So you can link it all. I just want to show you all some examples of what they can look like and what's already built that all you have to do is edit. So I highly suggest that if you want to dive into this, you start with one that's already sort of built and you just add and change what you need to. I like this Hall of Fame thing here. You could do we could do all of the week. I mean, it's kind of endless in what you can do. Here's a kind of relaxed classroom.
So that one's cute. This girl has virtual field trips up to all kinds of different places. Boston Children's Museum, Smithsonian, and those links all work. So if you're using one that's already built, you have to check the links and you have to watch the videos that it links to and all that sort of thing. But most of the time they're appropriate and it will save you a lot of time. Uh, so that virtual field trip one is pretty cool. Oh, I forgot to show this one to the last group. This one is I spy to play like virtually. So she tells you what's in the next slide and you can play like, okay, who can find how many dogs? How many dogs do you think is in the picture? Type it in the box when you count how many dogs there are and see who wins kind of thing. And there are a whole bunch of them. Shapes, rhyming things, rhyming room. It's really cute. This one has a bunch of different beginning and ending sound things. So that's a whole other idea that we can play virtually, just in case we're virtual again. Here is an interactive notebook. This lady, if I remember correctly, is a SPED teacher. So her kids have a goal and then they would practice whatever the goal is. So you would could make an individual notebook for each child with their own goal, which is pretty neat. Um, that's why I saved that one right there. If you want to do interactive notebooks, there are a lot of examples out there already. So you won't have to start from scratch. And then some lovely person made this whole resource of backgrounds and things to use. And I'm going to show you how to search for things to add them to your background. But this is already organized nicely for you. So if I want to go to curtains, it takes me to the slide that starts curtains. And I have all of these different choices already made. I'm going to talk about how to search and what to search for in a minute, but I just wanted to give you an idea. So let me go up a little bit. Sorry, Grace and I look like crazy people because the lights went out in our room. We're in the 500 building on DJOD, which is um, an, a portable And we feel like we're all the way out in the boondocks away from the rest of the campus. So this lady has floors and walls already pulled for you to choose from. So there are all of these options. So that's another nice thing to have. And I'm just going to show you a couple of examples because they're so different and they give you tons of ideas. Most people who post them on the Facebook group force a copy. So as soon as you open it, it makes you make a copy. And you can see that I've, you know, done a million of them already, copied a million of them. Um, I don't know why it's not clicking. So she has all of these different stations up. So when you click a different door, it brings you to the slide that's about that. It could also bring you to a website or a video or whatever you wanted to watch. Click on a computer screen to learn how to code. I probably should do that because I don't know how. She's got a podcast station. So she linked each door to a different slide. So the podcast station brings you to her slide about those. And then if you click it, okay, so last night that was working, so I might have messed that up. There we go. <laughs> so if you click whatever she has in the little iPad, it brings you to what she wants you to listen to. So that was pretty neat. Digital citizenship, computer science coding station, 
virtual maker space. I need to share this one with Lori Dupree because I forgot to show it in the last one. And um, I think she would probably like that one. Here's a first grade example. So the nice thing about these is all you have to do is edit it for what you want. So I could change this. Taught first grade a long time ago. Thank goodness I don't teach first grade anymore. You guys get a lot of exercise and do a lot. Thank y'all for being you. But she has a click here to her rug rules up. There was a whole separate slide, so I might have accidentally deleted that. But she, when you clicked on that, it brought you to a different slide that was about virtual rules. So that was pretty neat. And she has different links to different books up. So that already gives you a, an easy basis to start from. And then this one is a high school crime scene project, which was pretty neat. I just figured I'd save it to show y'all. So there's everything you can imagine from high school to lower school and everything in between. I thought that was pretty funny. And then there's this one. Still loading, but oh, this light bright right here leads you to a virtual light bright. So I don't know if you guys are as old as me, but light brights were pretty awesome when I was a little kid. So you can literally turn your screen into a light bright. If you don't know what a light bright is, pretend like you're as old as me and Google it. But I'm making a design with my little pegs like if I had a light bright board. I thought that was pretty cool. Didn't know that was out there. So she has all sorts of links like that. She This goes to ABCYA. Uh, it wants me to do a flash. I'm just gonna close it, but you get the idea. So that's a pretty cool one too. You could spend hours and hours and hours wasting time on these things, I promise. Um, but they're pretty fun. So last group, we started building a Bitmoji classroom. So I'm gonna show you how to do it because it's not that hard, but I do highly suggest that if you're starting one from scratch, oh, I didn't show you this. This is one of my favorites. So in third grade, we do a Chris Van Allsburg author study. So don't you know, somebody made one. I just changed. I literally on this one, all I had to do was change my Bitmoji. Her links all worked. They were all appropriate. I don't know. If, I, th I think this is going to be blocked for right now because I forgot to restart. So new people, if you get this blocked, um, I don't know what you want to call this thing that pops up. That means you have to restart your computer. Yesterday when I restarted, it took like 45 minutes to come back on. So I haven't restarted. Um, but all of those worked. Remember this was back in like somewhere between March and May. So back then all of these worked. So if I were going to repost this to my kids, I would have to make sure that these links still work and are still appropriate. I think that's a good overview of what you can do. So I'm going to go back to our to the meet slide for a second to see if anybody has any questions. Um, so Shanna, yes, you will be able to post a link in OnCourse Classroom. Last year when I posted mine, I posted it to Google Classroom. But intervention at the end of last year was optional. So you can imagine just how many students I had participating in optional intervention work. So I learned pretty quick that if I sent them 
an actual link and an email, they were more likely to use it. So I did both. I posted it in Google Classroom and I sent an, an email with the link. So at the end, you're going to wind up saving it as a PDF. When you save it as a PDF, it allows the links to still work, but it stops the things from moving around on the page. So they can't mess with whatever you've put in a spot. Like if you've put a sofa on the page, your sofa won't move. Um, so I did both. I remember it was fourth and fifth grade though. So you wouldn't necessarily have to do both. And it was intervention. So instead of using Google Classroom, where you're going to use on course. So yes, you would post it in on course classroom. I didn't know Ellen played that on her game show. That's pretty neat. Oh, you can also add music to the back of these too. Um, there's so much that you can add in. You can spend a lot of time down that rabbit hole if you are interested. I'm glad y'all had light brights in school. I had a light bright as a kid and I thought that website was pretty neat. Didn't even know it existed. Okay, so now I'm going to start building... I'm going to show you right now, Mackenzie. So I'm going to just go to my drive and start a new slide to show you how to start building one. I'm just going to click a, a blank slide. I'm going to give it a name. When my computer decides to let me type. I'm going to call it Bitmoji Practice 2 because the last session we called it Practice 1. So wh when I was used to build Google Slides, these things used to drive me crazy. I learned that you can just highlight the whole thing and backspace and it makes it all go away. You don't have to cut and cut and cut it and all that sort of thing to make it disappear. So the first thing that you want to do is add a background. So you're going to search an image. I'm sorry, I did that really fast. Let me go back. Hit an insert. No, no, you're not. I'm sorry. You don't have to insert for a background. You're going to click background. When background comes up, you're going to choose an image. And it'll probably be over here on upload first. So you're going to click over here to Google image search and you're going to search for a background. So I'm going to search for a background that's wall and floor. That's what you're going to start with. Now, remember, there was that person who shared that whole um, directory of things already done. So you could also, oh, too big. So when it's too big. You might need to say transparent. I'm going to talk about transparent in a minute. Okay. So that's my basic background. Now I'm going to start adding things. Let me find my... Oh, first I need to show you this. Sorry going to backtrack for a minute. If you don't have Bitmoji added as an extension in your Chrome, that's what you need to do first. So you're going to go to bitmoji.com. And you're going to scroll all the way down. And you have three choices down here. You want to add it to your Chrome desktop. I can't show you how to do it completely because it, I already have it. So you see how mine has removed from Chrome. Yours would say add to Chrome. I will tell you, I think this is the one that I had a lot of trouble with. And Chris, you wound up just logging in as me and making it happen. So there's always that option when things won't work. Christy will fix them for you. But once you add it, and don't try to do it right now because I think it won't work until you restart anyway. But it will add this little icon up here from Bitmoji. I will tell you that mine often lo logs me out. I find it's one of the things that I have to keep logging back into. It doesn't just necessarily keep you logged in forever. I mean, it will, it will for a few days, but not for very long. So I'm going to go back to my slide. 
And I have that little bit emoji right there. So I'm going to add me in right now. And I'm going to add me sitting on this little beanbag chair. So I just click the one that I want. So let me say this. You can search for anything. So I'm going to say reading because I kind of know what's going to come up when I search reading. I'm going to right click, copy this image, and then I'm just going to paste it onto my slide. So I can make it however big I want and move it around. And I can also click arrange and flip it if I want it to flip. Maybe I want it to be over on this side facing that way. So this is a neat tool that I found the other day. Let me see, what is it called? So I'm getting ahead of myself because I have this further down, but I want to show you while I'm thinking about it. I'll find it. Somehow you can change your color and such right in here and I can't remember where it is. I'll find it in a bit. So what you're going to start doing is adding things in the background. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to do a sofa so that I can show you how to sit somebody on the sofa. I will tell you that when you start searching for things Remember that we live in New Orleans because when you search for a sofa, you actually want to search for a couch because apparently people say couch. I don't think that word is ever said in my house. We would say sofa, but you don't just want to search for a couch. You want to search for a transparent couch or an image that's a PNG. And I'll show you what that is in a second because you probably can't understand me say PNG. So maybe I want this red one here. It's important to say transparent because if you don't say transparent, what pops up here is going to have a background behind it. Like there might be a white box around it or a black box around it. So when you search, you want to search for transparent or PNG. It's just the kind of image it is, just like a JPEG is a JPEG. So I'm going to make the couch right about here. I'm going to get rid of me for a minute. Put the couch here, and now I'm going to go to my Bitmoji. I'm going to search sitting. I always try to drag it over, and it doesn't let you. You actually have to copy it and paste it. But I'm facing the wrong way. So now I want to rotate it. so that I can sit on the couch. And sometimes you have to play with the size of you or the size of the couch and that sort of thing. And just like you would, it won't, it won't let me make me a little smaller. Just like you um, can change the size of any image, you can do the same. So I can make it I could even make myself upside down if I wanted me for some reason to be upside down. And then remember, I wouldn't even have to go back that way to do it, to undo it. I have that undo button in slides all the time, which can be your best friend. So the next thing I'm going to insert, sorry, all my phone is blowing up. The next thing that I'm going to add is a whiteboard. So I want to insert image and I want to search the web. So now I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to take that word transparent off whiteboard PNG. And I'm just going to choose one. Now, this I can click it and insert it, or I can just drag it over. 
I find the drag and over can sometimes be very slow on my computer. So sometimes for me, it's easier to just click the insert. So there's my whiteboard. And I can put anything in that. I could put a shelf and add a book. And I'm not going to waste time doing the shelf right now. But I am going to show you how to add a book because I feel like that's one thing that you'll often do. So in the last one, I chose Sylvester and a Magic Pebble so that I would have to type in the longest book name on the planet because I just wasn't thinking. So I've already, I already had the search up. So I searched Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. I clicked images so that I get a bunch of different book covers of Sylvester and the Magic Pebble up. And then I'm going to just press, uh, I'm going to right click it so that I get this little menu. And I'm going to copy the image. And then I'm going to go back to my classroom and paste it. I'm going to right click again and paste. So now I have Sylvester and the Magic Pebbles book cover. Pretend like I have it sitting on a shelf because you wouldn't just have it sitting on the floor. Then I want to add in, say I want a video of somebody reading it. So I already pulled up a search somewhere. There it is. I would have to watch this video. I would have to make sure it's actually Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, and I would have to make sure it's appropriate. I have not done that, so don't quote me on this one, but I'm going to show you how to do it so that you know how to link it. So you're just going to right click it and copy link address. Go back over here. You're going to click on your book so it knows where to put it. You have this little icon up here that looks like chain link. It says insert link. Click that and you're going to paste your link into it. And so now when your kids click on that book, it's going to take them straight to that video. So it's not hard at all to add links and photographs or images to link those links to, um, if that makes sense. Any, I'm going to go back to the chat to see if there are any questions before I go on. Anybody? Sarah Matthews, I love that that girl has Chris Van Allsburg dog sitting in that classroom too. It's adorable. Yes, Latara, I'll share the library example. And if you join one of those Facebook groups, Use the search button on your Facebook group too, because you can find probably 50 examples of libraries. It's really amazing what's out there. Any questions before I keep going? I'm trying to go quick, y'all. So when you save this, you would click, let me get rid of the search over here you would click file download and pdf you want to turn it into a pdf so that your kids can't move these things around so before it's a pdf all of this moves but once i turn it into a pdf none of this would move but my link to sylvester and the magic pebble would still work as a link so that's really important so you would just save it as that, and then you would post that link in your on-course classroom or in an email or however you're going to send it out. You're more than likely going to post it in your on-course classroom. Any questions? To turn my screen off and see if anybody has any questions. Book links, sure. So I'm going to go back to my practice classroom. I'm going to find a book. Um, what do I want? Uh, I, I like to put the picture in first and then put the link to it. I don't know that it matters. It just sort of gives, lets me start. So if I'm going to pick um, a cat in a hat, I'm 
sorry y'all i promise i pressed the button it's just running slow Try a new tab. And I want a picture of the book cover. So I'm going to go to images. I'm going to find one. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to just right click that book and copy the image. Now I'm going to go back to my classroom and I'm just going to right click again and paste and it's going to paste that image on. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Grace. <laughs> Sorry, y'all can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Let me go back to this. Okay, I'm going to try that again. So I went to Google and I typed in cat in the hat and I clicked images and I got all of these book covers of the cat in the hat. So I right click on it and I copy the image and then I go back to my classroom and I, I'm going to get rid of this one first. I go back to my classroom, right click again and paste it. So there's my book and I would have a shelf and I could make it whatever size I wanted on the shelf. And then I'm going to add the link to someone reading the cat in the hat. You could add a link of you reading the cat in the hat. You could do a screencastify of you reading the cat in the hat because your kids want to hear you reading. I believe we bought the unlimited version of screencastify so you can talk for as long as you want on it. Um, so to add the link, you have to click the image that you want it on. So if I was adding Sylvester in the magic pebble, I would click on that one. If I'm adding the cat in the hat, I would click on that one. I would go back to do a search. Now I will say, you can use that explore in tools. It's supposed to be a shortcut. I don't like it. I find you don't get everything in it. Um, you might like it. And I'm going to say cat in the hat video. Well, video, right? And you would watch the one that you want, pick the one that you want, and then when you right click it, you copy the link address. And then you go back. Nope, I'm wrong, sorry. You would not just do that. Pretend like I did not show you that. Because you're not gonna copy and paste the link, you're gonna add the link in using the link button. Otherwise, you get that craziness. So you would click on the cat in the hat. There is a link button up here. It looks like chain link. And it says insert link. It's right next to the comment button that looks like a plus sign. It's on the left of that. So you would click insert link. Here's where you would paste your link. And hit apply. And now when they click this one, it'll bring them straight to that video that you chose. The thing that takes the most amount of time is choosing what you want. Doing the actual building of the slide really doesn't take that long, especially once you get going in it. I'm gonna go back to the meet. Any questions? You can unmute your mic if you have a question because I don't think we have that many. Okay. All right, then. Thank you for being a nice, great, quiet audience. If you want any of those rooms that I've shared, send me an email. I'm not going to remember to um, send it to you unless you somebody reminds me. So let me know if you want any of those. If you want to build one, I highly suggest you join one of those mini Facebook groups and you use the search button. You're welcome. It's pretty awesome. You could spend hours and hours and hours trying to build your own whatevers. I've seen rooms about space and rooms about everything you can imagine. Bye, guys.
Thanks, y'all. Bye. Thanks, Yvette.